like this is mainly just a, today's just a short brief introduction to the whole mocap system uh, I'm going to take you through it like a brief explanation of how it works um, I'll also take you through health and safety and then basically like the idea is, is to you know to see the space to know what you can do with it and to you know without knowledge you can start thinking about how you're going to you know plan your own captures right so all right let's, let's start with the system itself okay hands up anyone know how the system works already okay go on would you like to explain it we have a multiple cameras on around all around here and also we have the suits so from the suits on there are points or like the, markets uh, yeah something like markets the markets and yeah. then when we do any sort of movements it's all captures in there and yeah. we get the projection on the screen yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah much like so like yeah uh, this is Gerard and he like, he manages this area he manages the make up stage um, and he's holding this and so yeah as you can see it's a it's what we call a virtual camera um, like in fact yeah if you have a look you can see there's a little monitor up a uh, little wireless monitor. Super wireless. Not really, but it uh, could be. Well, we it cable, be. We cable it up. And what happens in situations, uh, we might or might not have it ourselves in this class. This is more like what Thicker does, but I'm trying to, rather thinking about how I can get some of it into the class. Um, but what will happen is you'll have like a you'll have like a live setup. This is actually a bit advanced. I'll, um, I'll explain it briefly and then I'll talk about it in more detail later but basically it's a virtual camera like there's three markers on it which gives you a rigid body uh, and then you can you can actually track that camera and you can have a virtual camera that's why I call it a virtual camera so you can then apply this to your camera and your live scene yeah um, or if you do want live streaming like Unreal or Unity um, send it right in so you can have that authentic handheld feel yeah so it's it's effectively a camera, but the camera is inside your your scene, inside your environment where you're capturing, um, and that's why in terms of the operator you get that little TV screen, so you can see what you're actually, you know, what you're seeing inside the in the scene. You know, the scene could just be like, you know, an office scene uh, with people sitting at a desk or something, something like that, um, or it could be in the app, great app course, just depends on what you've created. Um, so. Let's just talk about basics. So, as you can see, uh, we have a mocap system. There's nine cameras. One, two, eight. three, four, eight cameras. There's eight cameras, which gives us this volume area here. The, um, so, and here, let's have a go. I might even like, I'll pass out markers. So, as you can see, I've got like a couple of markers on here. And when I hold it up, So actually, if I cover all the markers except one, what you can see is I've got this one marker right here. And what's what's cool is like you can see you can see which cameras can see the marker. Uh, now, in theory, okay. So now, uh, if I hold it, uh, oh wait, if I block it. So I block it like that. So, whoa. basically, what I'm trying to do is like, you know, the question is, what's the minimum number of cameras? And I should just explain, like, uh, triangulation. It's called an optical motion capture system. Um, and what that means is, like, these cameras, they're, they're cameras, they're optical cameras. Like, Jared, could you go to like a black and white on one of the, yeah, one of the cameras? So if you select one and you'll see it changes colour. So see, you selected that one over there. And here I am. But normally, this is a grayscale image. Normally, we don't use that. Uh, but see how the markers, see how the markers and reflective surfaces like show up really brightly. Like what happens is the image gets crunched down into like just a black and white. And normally, like the markers are white and everything else is black. Um, and you literally just got, so you've got this screen, um, <coughs> you, know, you, you literally only end up with coordinates.
coordinates. So at the end of the day, you have like an X and a Y, like a 2D screen coordinate of each marker. And the thing is, is with only one camera, um, you'll only ever have X and Y. But you know, what we need is three dimensional data, we need X, Y, and Z. Um, and so it's triangulation. Anyone remember triangulation from like year 10 maps? Maybe. Um, you know, it's the whole thing. Like, if you've got if one camera, if you've only got one camera, you can't get that third dimension. But if you've got two cameras, like they can point at each other, um, and then and then you then you triangulate, and then you can determine what that third dimension, the depth is of a marker. So in theory, you only need two cameras to to get like the X, Y, and Z. So as you can see, you just um. As you can see, uh, here's my marker. And at the moment, I've got three, one, two, three, I've got four and a really dodgy one that's like not sure about it. And if I come over here, what I really want is I want to see. Okay, so if I'm over here now. Um, actually, do you want to try spinning it around so. So if I move, oh there we go. So yeah, now I've got like a relationship. Now I know like to, I'm over here, I'm over here. Um, like this, there's these cameras over here. This one here really doesn't want to do much. But basically, if I, if I hide my marker, I've got three. I think you need a minimum of three. If I do that, Still seeing it very well. If I do that, ah, this is it. Perfect. Yeah. So there you go. That's the whole idea. You need, you need at least, in theory, you need at least two. But I'd say what you really want is like three or four. Um, you know, to see a marker. Anyone like to wave a marker around and watch it? Yeah. Hope you all get have have some fun. Here you go. What I'll do is I'm going to hold out various numbers. Like I'm going to hold out various numbers. What's interesting sometimes, guys, is that I've had students who have um, highly reflective gym boots or sneakers, and they also get picked up as markers. <laughs> Brave party. Alright, uh, this was a part of it, let's do a Mexican wave. 
So we'll start over here and we'll go that way. I'll count to three. So everyone put their markers down. I'll count to three and then like we do a Mexican way. Okay, so one, two, three, go. Oh, uh, it's like <laughs> It's like it travels like a wave. Like a Venezuelan wave, just slightly further north. Oh, okay. Alright, okay, so one, I'll go back, I'll go again. Okay, so I'll go first. So one, two, three, go. Oh, that's a There we go, it's like a wave. <laughs> okay. Alright, cool. So, um, alright, Mark is back. Um, in fact, pass them to the person so that it's from right to mine. So I'll show you. So I'm going to pass them to you. Yeah. Okay, and then you, you take it and take the whole thing. And build a raft. And when you're working with them, never pull them by the marker itself because they're really um, delicate. They break all the time. But yeah, just, just like raft it up and pass it to the next person. And then I'll collect it at the end. And in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to quickly take, bring you back here in this... Um, it's a bit messy right now because Vic is moving out. Um, whoever's got it, just put it, just plug it up there. Just plug it there, whoever's got the raft. So just come in here briefly. Um, very briefly, suits. <laughs> suits. So whoever is going to volunteer and like be a performer, um, typically we'll be looking for two performers. Um, they'll be back here, and I won't go into too much detail because whoever suits up um, will take through more detail. But basically, the idea is is you want to find you want to find a top and a bottom um, that fits you nicely, like erring on the side of tight rather than loose. Because the thing is, is like if I